Hi, Assalamualaikum Warahmatullahi Wabarakatuh We are from Trimpers Legal Corp Group Today we are going to present about the Doctrine of Separation of Power and Principle of Check and Balance Our group consists of 4% Me, Lukman, Intias, Tengku Shara and Zaidila Okay, today we are going to present about the what is a Doctrine of Separation of Power First of all, Separation of Power is a basic doctrine in a modern democratic government Meaning that doctrine of separation of power is a clear demarcation of personal and function between the legislature, the executive and judiciary in order that none should have an excessive power and that there should be a place in a system check and balance between the institution. The simplest logic of separation requires the creation of two divisions from a single whole. One can be further subdivided into three or even more. Uh, for example, Aristotle stated that there are three elements in each constitution. The three are the deliberative, the official, and judicial. If these are well organized, the institution must be well organized. Next, Boron Montesquieu recognized the need for and recommended the separation of the one into three. He puts forward the idea that powers of a government will of three kinds. Firstly, the legislative powers for making laws. Secondly, the executive power to govern and practice the law. And thirdly, the judicial power which enforce the law. Okay. In a similar vein, John Locke will place it Montesquieu search for a state of more balanced government. Okay. To avoid the dangers of absolute power and since human imperfection make it easy for a strong personality to seize power. He favored decentralizing government power and rejected royal divine right. However, the sentiment as shown by Montesquieu and Locke can be contrasted with that of Thomas Hobbes. Okay? In contrast to supporters of limited government, Hobbes believed in the rule of a king because he believed a country needed an authority figure to provide a clear direction and firm leadership. He argued that democracy which gave citizens the power to choose their government leaders would fail because people were only interested in promoting their own interests. Besides, Sir Ever Jennings has interpreted Montesquieu's word to mean that uh, the legislator and the executive should have no influence over the other, but rather that neither should exercise the power of the other. And Sir William Blackstone added that the executive and legislative should be sufficiently spirited to avoid tyranny. Okay? He nevertheless viewed their total separation as potentially leading to dominance of the executive by the legislature. Thus, the partial separation of power is required to achieve a mixed and balanced constitutional structure. What we can see from this topic, the separation of power is kept in place by giving the legislature, the executive and judiciary formal roles in running the states. And its institutions are separate from each other. And each one has its own set of responsibilities and tasks, which are carried out by different group of people. And there is also a separation of function which states that one branch of government may not take over the functions of another. So what we need to know that the doctrine of separation of powers include check and balance system. Okay? The federal constitution provides for institutional separation and specifies three branches, which are the executive, the legislative, and judiciary. And each part of government is granted specific powers of supervision, check over the other branches of government and the ability to control the other branches' actions. And lastly, the objective is to keep a balance of power among the three branches of government and to prevent one arm of government from usurping power or taking over functions from another. The first organ of government is executive. It was led by the Malaysian cabinet or also known as Jemaah Menteri Malaysia. The head of government is prime minister and they hold the principle of responsibility which none as collectively accountable. Under Article 43, Yang Di Pertan Agong must choose or select the cabinet of minister from two houses of parliament, which is House of Representative or House of Senate. Under the same article, it was stated that Yang Di Pertuan Agong must select the Prime Minister who has the majority of confidence under House of Representative. After that, 
Yang di Pertuan Agong must appointed Cabinet of Minister on advice of Prime Minister. The second organ of government is legislature. Under Article 44, it was emphasized the House of Representative or Dewan Rakyat. The term of office for members of Parliament cannot exceed five years and the general election must hold to selected a new members of Parliament. There was about 200 and 22 members of the one rakyat yang di Perkuan Agong has the power to dissolve the parliament at any moment based on the recommendation of prime minister under article 45 it was emphasized about the one negara or also non asinet under article 45 clause 3 and clause 3a it was mentioned that they serve for 3 years per terms which a maximum of 2 terms for each members there are also 26 senators are chosen by 30 state assemblies and 44 senators are appointed by the Yang Dipertuan Agong based on advice of Prime Minister. The last organ of government is judiciary. There are two types of trials which is criminal and civil. Under Article 121 of the Constitution, it was established two coordinated high court which is one, the High Court in Malaya for Peninsula Malaysia and the second one is the High Court in Sabah and Sarawak for East Malaysia. The Superior Court consists of High Court, Court of Appeal and Federal Court which the Magistrate Court and Section Court are the subordinate court. So how does check and balance power being exercised by executives towards uh, judiciary? Under Article 128 of the Federal Constitution uh, has laid down the jurisdiction of the Federal Court where it shows the supremacy of the court and their exclusive, exclusive powers uh, to declare an act being void by reason of ultra-virus. Uh, this, this provision uh, has brought the coalition between the executive and the uh, judiciary and there are several provisions that illustrate the check and balance between the executive and the judiciary and this provision is being made on the purpose to make sure that there is no one was above the law and they are bound by the law. Under Article 122B of the Federal Constitution, Executive placed its role in the appointment of the Federal Court Judge where Yang, De Yang Dipertuan Agong must appoint based on the advice of the Prime Minister and consultation from rulers. This can be a sensitive issue as it comes into the question regarding the independency of the judiciary and Article 122B must be read together with Article 40 which requires YDPA to accept and act in accordance uh, with the Prime Minister's advice and it appears that the Prime Minister makes uh, the final decision in selecting the Chief Justice. Next, based on the Article 42 of the Federal Constitution, YDPA has power to grant pardon uh, of all offences uh, which have been committed in Kuala Lumpur, Labuan and Putrajaya, while the ruler and the Yang Dei Pertuan Negeri uh, of a state has power to grant pardon of all offences committed in their respective states. And it must be noted that Article 42 must be read together with with Article 39 or and 40, Yang Di Pertuan Ago must consult uh, and get the advice from the Pardon Board and consider for a written opinion from the Attorney General. In addition, uh, judges also can be removed by YDPA under Article 125 Clause 3 with the Tribunal of uh, not less than 5% and recommendation by Prime Minister. In the case of Muhammad Khairul Azam against Lembaga Pengampunan Wilayah Persekutuan, uh, the court was discussing on the issue of the pardon given by y YDPA where it is not a royal uh, prerogative but it, it is an exercise of executive power by YDPA on advice. This power was being exercised in the case of Juraimi against public prosecutor where the issue arises whether the court has power to interfere with the royal prerogative of mercy by the Sultan of Pahang. 
This case was happened in Pahang, so the power to grant pardon is the Sultan of Pahang, and mercy is not the subject of legal rights. It begins where the legal rights end, uh, and the death sentence imposed uh, on the plaintiff here is constitutionality valid and permissible by law. And I am of the view uh, that the legality of a delayed execution cannot be questioned by its very nature. The prerogative is not a susceptible or amendable to judicial review. To enhance the discussion, uh, in the most recent case that can be seen regarding the case of Datuk Sri Anwar Ibrahim, where uh, he got a royal pardon before he became a Prime Minister of Malaysia. And... This case is quite controversial because Datuk Sri Anwar was portrayed as the person who committed sodomy. And uh, in, in this case, the Court of Appeal convicted Anwar for the five years imprisonment in 2014. And after the general election uh, in 2018, Tuan Dr Mahathir, was, who was a Prime Minister at that time, sending an application to Yang Dipertuan Agong seeking for the pardon on behalf of Datuk Sri Anwar. And he was then got a full pardon from Yang Dipertuan Agong at that time and ended his punishment and in prison. In the events happened in 1988 where uh, the Prime Minister at that time uh, made a pre made a representation to the YDPA uh, regarding Tun Muhammad Saleh Abbas, stating that he had committed uh, various acts of judicial misbehaviour. The Prime Minister at, the ta at that time was Tun Dr Mahade, and uh, he heavily criticised uh, the judiciary and judges for various reasons, and he can be said not to be uh, satisfied with the ways of judiciary interpreting the law and then a tribunal was formed according to article 125 which was being appointed by Yang Dipertuan Agong where it leaves a doubt uh, regarding the uh, regarding the independency of the judiciary so Prof Khairil uh, is me the head of the day and I will uh, present to you about the checks and between the executive and executive first of all there is an absolute separation between legislative and executive in terms of special of power is concerned of uh, this can be viewed uh, of the virtue of article 74 clause 1 of the FC itself that explain the uh, function below to legislative this article promulgates that the parliament may any time without prejudice a man and the law uh, pertaining to the enumerates matters in the federalist or concavalist concavalist means here federalist uh, and statelist no what article 80 of the federal uh, clause 1 of the federal constitution explain for about the function belong to the executive in terms of the administrations. The executive, uh, according to this article, shall extend to all matters with respect to which parliament has amended the law, why the state executive member authorities may extend to all matters to respect which the legislature of the state makes the law. Meaning to say, executive have the power to amend the law at the state level. However, there is an enveloping when talking about article uh, 43 of federal constitution which where the parliament also a government with purposes of more confidence meaning to say there is an overlap, uh, overlapping between executive and legislative so the member of legislative uh, this is talking about the check and its balance between legislature and judiciary the member of legislative do not involve in appointment of any judge judiciary judge are bare for becoming the members of legislative body there can be different functions as well legislature play the other as to enact the law amended by the parliament uh, and when passed by the parliament, it constitute a statute and case law to be referred. Article 63, uh, clause 1 of the Federal Constitution provides that the validity of any proceeding in either the House of Parliament or any committed there shall not be questioned by the courts. This gives absolute separation of power for legislature to apply its discretionary power to only its House. Meaning to say, the legislature may interfere when judiciary makes something wrong which is unconstitutional and void in order to stable uh, the matters like before. The support in the case of Stephen Kalonin Khan was Sultan Abdul Haji Open and Tawi Sad in the way in this case the state legislature declared that they have lost confidence in Stephen Kalonin Khan as the chief minister of Sarawak and they were the petitions to the governor of Sarawak to Abang Haji Open to Stephen Kalonin At the same time, the Prime Minister to Abdul Rahman also state the same request to uh, request uh, Stephen Kalonin to be uh, dismissed uh, from his office. However, the 
uh, Stephen Carlo refused because he claimed he was the one of the men to Sarah Sarawak and he argued that the letter was to support by the formal motion of no confidence and he continued to commence the confidence of the majority. Uh, Subsequently, the Abang Haji Open declared that Stephen Kalong had cheese to hold the office and had appointed the Kawasai as the new chief minister. Uh, it was held by the court that according to section 31 of the Interpretation Order of the Sarawak uh, State Constitution that the, the council legally have the power to appoint or dismiss a chief minister. Uh, if he refused to resign but also failed uh, to adhere to the advice of dissolution of the council degree. And also, uh, with pertemuan to the article 150 of the Sarawak State Constitution, we stipulated that the council degree may be proceed without the presence of the Menteri Besar uh, Sarawak. And finally, a meeting was commenced by the council degree and Stephen Kalong was removed. Although the motion of non confidence may be proposed to remove the executive by then later, the electorate cannot do nothing unless he can elect for the best government in the becoming election. Instead, the judiciary has been power to be performed to check and balance the power differed by the legislative. This can be simply understood by the ritual of Article 4, Clause 1 of the Federal Constitu Constitution, which stipulated that the power granted by the judiciary to consider a law to be void if there is unconstitutionality to, uh, of the emanation of the law. Not only that, the Article 127 of the FC also uh, generally provide that the removal of the judge can be done by the YDPA uh, with the tribunal of not less than 5% and the recommendation of the Prime Minister on behalf of the Executive. In the case of Ahtiyan Muslims Government of Malaysia, where in this case the plenty who are charged with the armed gang robbery under Section 392 and 397 of the Penal Codes, uh, we is uh, primary material with the Section 5 of the Firearm. Uh, the plaintiff claimed that the Section 5 of the Firearm uh, was ultra wise to Article 8, Clause 1 of the Federal Constitutions. And it was held that Sufian uh, LP outlined the doctrine of Parliament's supremacy is not applicable in Malaysia, and thus the Parliament have no power or uh, discretionary to make the law as he wish. So he was liable to the punishment. Also in JP Bertrand Services Director General of Immigrations, Malaysia and others, the plaintiff and American journalist with the permit uh, two years to work here uh, was denied by the immigration authorities after he published the article which contained the uh, affair about colonialism and mismanagement in our country. The plaintiff then requested the permission for the High Court to file a petition for certainty and permission but was denied. In addition, the court determined that the plaintiff had not afforded the opportunity to deny the cancellation of the work uh, his permit, and that the requirement of natural justice has not been met. Pursuant to Article 127 of the FC, he also restricted for the Parliament to check the conduct of the judge, unless there is a substantive motion of which notice has been given uh, by not less than one of quarter of half from the member of Parliament himself. In addition, the judiciary also has the power to check on the subsidiary legislations by the which of Section 23, Subsection 1 and Section 87, Subsection D of the Interpretation Act 1988 and 1976 uh, that any subsidiary legislation that is inconsistent with the Constitutions and the Act of Parliament and state enactments shall be void.